All right. Hello, and welcome back to the Broken Business Models podcast. We're your hosts, Ryan and James. And before we get into today's podcast, just a quick disclaimer, nothing in this podcast or any of our other materials should be taken as investing advice. Uh, make sure to do your own work and consult a professional before making any investing or trading decision. So with that being said, the topic of today's video is going to be um, the effect of passive index funds and kind of the rise of passive investors as a large portion of the broader stock market on stock prices and stock valuations, specifically in the context of what it means for short sellers. This topic was a, a uh, requested topic by one of one of our Discord uh, community members. So uh, just a quick, quick reminder, we have a website called differentiatedanalytics.com that we created. Um, by subscribing to this website, one of the things you get access to is inclusion in the, in the Discord community and also access to a number of useful investing tools such as our own original short uh, short selling research, as well as our short report aggregator in which we kind of track the made, the short reports released by a handful of the short short selling uh, firms that we hold in high regard. So if you're interested in, in any of these kind of features or being able to make recommendations for video topics of your own, please feel free to use the coupon code WSM50 for 50% off uh, at differentiatedanalytics.com which would bring the total cost to $10 a month. So with that being said, um, we need to get, get into the first topic, the, the, the topic of today's video, which is the effect of passive investing on stock price valuations. So if we back up and give a little bit of background on passive investing, passive investing is a massive and growing part of the overall stock market. Over the past 20 years, you can see from, from, these, from these charts, each of the kind of five of the major US stock market indexes, the share of passive ownership has increased tremendously over the past 20 years. And if you look at the, the chart on the bottom right, which denotes the total stock market, um, today it has reached, as of 2021, uh, 30%, over 30% of the, of the total stock market is owned by passive investors. So the main point is that passive passive investing is massive and growing over the past 20 years to the tune of on the order of about 30% or more of uh, the total stock market being owned by passive investors. Yeah, and so with that um, being said, how does that impact uh, stock prices and um, specifically with regards to, you know, how should short, short sellers be thinking about this? So I thought we'd look at one example in particular, which is Nikola, the hydrogen truck company. And you know, as you all probably know, Nikola has been already exposed as a fraud a couple of years ago, uh, and the business is a complete failure. Um, it's an unviable company and will probably go bankrupt within the next few years. It's definitely you know a crappy company. Yeah, if you look at the shareholders, um, 30% of all of Nikola's shares are owned by institutional investors. Um, but if you look at who these institutional investors are, almost all of them are passive investors who will just you know invest in a broad uh, in a, you know in a broad basket of stocks without doing you know any analysis on any individual stock. And so the single largest shareholder of Nikola is Norges Bank. They own 107 uh, 107 million shares out of Nikola's total 1.3 billion shares. So Norges Bank alone owns 8% of Nikola. And uh, Norges Bank is the Norwegian sovereign wealth fund. And they um, are they invest completely passively. And if you look at the other major shareholders, then it's Vanguard and BlackRock. These are also massive uh, passive investors. They have ETFs and index funds, uh, which track various indexes. So while there is like a lot of institutional ownership, uh, it's almost all by either passive um, investors or quantitative like hedge funds. Um, there are very few uh, like discretionary hedge funds, um, you know, so-called like real investor, real professional investors who would actually own Nikola. It's mostly owned by passive, uh, quantitative and retail investors. 
And so how does this uh, 33% of uh, institutional ownership, majority of which is passive, how does that impact Nikola's share price? Well, if we look at the mechanics of how this works, let's go back to Norges Bank, the single largest shareholder. So they are the Norman Wealth Fund. They have $1.5 trillion of assets under management. And they invest that uh, completely passively. So they would say, uh, for example, we want to allocate a certain amount of money into U.S. small cap stocks. And uh, it comes out, you know, based on how much money they invested, they would own 8% of all of these U.S. small cap stocks, including Nikola. Uh, so that's why they want to maintain that 8% ownership, because that's kind of what their passive um, investment framework mandates that they do. And the chart at the bottom here, it shows Nikola's share price, the black line, as well as these green bars are the number of Nikola shares owned by Norges Bank. And we can see that um, as the uh, share price has been declining, Norges Bank's ownership has been increasing uh, in terms of the number of shares. So why is that the case? Well, the reason is as Nikola is running out of money, which it frequently is, they resort to dilutive equity raises um, to raise capital. That increases the share count. And as the share count increases, Norges Bank's ownership stake is diluted, so their ownership stake decreases. In order to bring it back up to their desired 8%, they are required to keep uh, buying more and more shares. It happens automatically, basically, every time Nikola does an equity raise. So how does this you know, buying pressure impact the share price of Nikola? Well, obviously, having the uh, you know this automatic buying pressure from uh, passive investors does benefit Nikola's share price to some extent. But you know, as the company is failing, uh, eventually their share price will go to zero. And as we'll argue here, uh, the inclusion of passive passive index funds can uh, delay, but not completely forestall. Uh, a company's path towards zero if it is truly an unviable company. And the reason that is, so let's take, you know, as a hypothetical example, let's say Nikola, you know, they started off with 100 shares, half of which are owned by active investors, and the other half are owned by passive investors. Now, let's say they run out of money, and they need to do an equity raise, and they issue an additional 100 shares. Now, the passive investors will automatically buy 50 of those newly minted shares because they need to, uh, you know, because they automatically maintain their ownership percentage. So, of those 100 new shares, 50 of those will be bought by the passive investors. However, uh, the passive investors will never own 100% of the company. Uh, so there's always going to be, so therefore the passive investors are never going to buy all of the newly issued shares. In this example, of that 100 new shares, 50 of them need are going to need to be purchased by so-called real buyers. So people who are active investors and have to you know make a decision that they believe in Nikola as a company uh, and want to invest in the stock. Now, eventually, as the as Nikola in this case hypothetically they continue to lose money they continue to be a failure of a company eventually there's not going to be enough real buyers uh, to buy any of the shares and the any of the newly minted shares so the share price will have to decline the passive investors can add some buying pressure but they can never soak up all of the um, soak up all of the new issuance so that's why eventually uh, the stock price will still decline despite some buying pressure from passive investors. Another thing to note is um, what we see a lot of the times from especially on Twitter and on various you know online forums when there are you know novice investors or unsophisticated investors will often see that uh, oh you know BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street just bought a bunch of new shares of you know XYZ company. And they take that as a validation of this stock, saying, "Okay, if all these big, sophisticated uh, institutions are willing to buy this stock, that means that they're bullish on the stock, and they must believe in the company." In reality, this is all just from passive funds, uh, so there's zero informational value by the fact that they 
uh, bought more shares of this. So I think that's something people need to, um, especially novice investors, need to realize that you know just because an institution bought a stock, a lot of the times it's just for a based on a passive investing mandate and doesn't really mean anything. Okay, so are passive passive market participants good or bad for short sellers? So there's some pros and some cons. The pros are that there may be some overvalued stocks opportunities created by the buying pressure, the kind of artificial buying pressure by the passive index funds buying up portions of, of these companies' stock offerings. Uh, also, the stock that is the stocks that are owned by the, these passive funds are much more likely to be uh, put up available for for bar for borrowing for short sellers to borrow and then turn around and, and sell, which can decrease massively the cost of borrow for these stocks um, and these short opportunities. There's some cons though, um, because of the buying pressure from these passive index funds, uh, the stock may not decline as quickly as as you may want even if your short thesis is playing out as you as you had expected, it may just kind of drag out the process and take it longer for the stock to go to zero. And um, short sellers are uh, at a, a high risk if the stock price increases at the same time that share count, share counts is increasing simultaneously as a result of these passive index funds uh, uh, buying up the, the share offerings. Okay, so passive investors, if you look at it, passive investors appear more likely to lend out their shares to short sellers than active investors. And we can see this kind of in the data in terms of, uh, you know, stocks that have a large, um, large ownership by passive investors generally have more percentage of their shares available than uh, stocks that have a lower percentage ownership by passive investors. And this kind of makes sense if you think about it. Uh, the reason is, if you're a passive investor, you uh, you of course would want to lend out your shares and capture a little bit a little bit of extra return uh, from lending out those shares, as opposed to if you're an active investor and you have a concentrated position in a certain stock, you may be more hesitant to lend out your shares to short sellers for fear of that increasing the selling pressure on that stock that you have a concentrated position in. Um, so. State Street actually did a study on on this and found found this to be the case, generally speaking, between passive and active investors. However, they also found that in the long run, even active investors should not be hesitant to lend their shares out to to short sellers, because while it may create an impact on the price of the stock on the in the short run, at least in the long run, if a company is, um, you know, in the, in the long run, the availability to short will not have an impact on the ultimate fundamental value of the company or the ultimate long-term value of the stock price. So overall, what that means is um, the existence of massive passive investors in the markets is generally probably a good thing for, for short sellers. Um, the existence of these passive, these large passive uh, investors means that there's a lot more shares available to lend, which brings down the cost of borrow for short sellers to borrow the stock. Even though they may um, increase the time length and uh, increase the amount of time that it may take for a shorted, for a crappy company's stock to go to zero in the short run, uh, in the long run, it will not prevent the company's stock from going to zero if, the, if it is indeed a fundamentally unsound business. Um, and in the meantime, uh, having the much lower cost of borrow due to these passive funds will massively can have a large positive impact on your overall returns of the short. Yeah, so I think that uh, wraps it up on what we had um, for this video as far as the uh, impact of passive index funds on the stock market. Uh, if you have uh, any questions or anything that you'd like to add, please let us know in the comments section below, uh, and we will see you all on the next one.